Mark 14. I'm going to read verse 26 down through a few verses. Mark 14, 26. And when they had sung a hymn that just had the Lord's Supper, and when they, Jesus and disciples, had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. <clears throat> and Jesus said unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. But after that I am risen, I will go before you into Galilee. But Peter said unto him, Although all shall be offended, yet will not I. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, That this day, even in this night, before the cock crow thrice, thou shalt deny me thrice. But he spake the more vehemently. If I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any wise. Likewise also they uh, said they all. And they came to a place uh, which was named Gethsemane. And he said unto his disciples, Sit ye here while I pray. And he talked with Peter and James, or he taketh with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be sore amazed. And to be very heavy. And he said unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Tarry you here and watch. And he went forth a little, and he fell on the ground, and he prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. And he cometh and findeth them sleeping. And said unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Couldst thou not watch one hour? Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed and spake the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again. For their eyes were heavy, neither wist they what to answer. And he cometh the third time and said unto them, Sleep on now, take your rest. It's enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of the sinners. Rise up, lest you go. Let us go. Lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. Uh, I, I'm interested in verses number 37. He said, He cometh and findeth them sleeping and saith unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Couldst thou not watch one hour? I, I want to talk about couldst thou not do this? Couldst thou not do this? He, he, he Even in Matthew and Luke and Mark, all of them, they, they have the same kind of wordings. And Jesus goes out and prays. He comes back. He challenges them before he leaves. He said, watch and pray. And he comes back in their sleep. And he kind of rebukes them and says, couldst thou not do this? Couldst thou not watch one hour? Uh, can you imagine how the Savior felt? When he is, well, he's facing Calvary. And he went a little farther. And he comes back. He takes three of his favorite disciples. And he comes back. He said, watch and pray. And he had done told him he just had the Lord's Supper. He just told him that his hour was at hand. He's going to Calvary, dying, all that. And he looks at them and they're asleep. <laughs> And he said, couldst thou not watch one hour? Just one hour. And uh, the reproach uh, of Christ in this garden of Gethsemane was spoken to the disciples and particularly Peter. The other disciples were there, the other two. And Jesus looked, but he said to Peter, couldst thou not watch? It was one hour. Peter had failed in the ministry of prayer. Peter had just got through saying, Lord, <laughs> I won't, I'm not going to deny you. I'm not going to deny you, and uh, I'm not going to fail you. And God just had got through telling him uh, before the cock crowed three times, you're going to deny me. That ought to drove him to prayer, but it didn't. It didn't. He just uh, took it for a great assault, went on. But he, he, he says in that verse, a question, couldst thou, couldst thou not uh, uh, watch and pray. Couldst thou not watch and pray? Couldst thou not watch? And one that one in Matthew twenty six says, "Watch and pray." The next verse in verse thirty eight says, "Watch ye and pray." One hour. 
one eye. Let me give you three things. I thought about the extent of this death. He said, couldest thou? He's looking directly at Peter. Couldest thou? You, Peter. You're the one that just popped your mouth off. You're the one that just said you would never deny me. You're the one that said you would never fail me. You're the one that said you would never run off. You're the one that said all this stuff. You're the one that opened your mouth up and made your brags about what, what, what kind of stand you're going to take and what you're going to do. And you're the one, and uh, these words was addressed to Simon Peter. And, and after all that Christ had done for Peter, think about all the things that Christ had done for Peter. Think about all the things that Peter had experienced walking with Christ. Yeah. All the things uh, Peter had, uh, in fact, God had pulled him up out of the water when he walked on the water. Christ hadn't helped him, he'd have drowned it. Amen. Christ had done a lot of things for Peter. And and God, and Peter had seen God do all kinds of miracles. Right. Perform all kinds of works and all kinds of great things. And, and uh, uh, the profession uh, Peter had just made here tops it all. But yet God looks at him and says, Couldest thou? You, Peter. You're the one that's supposed to be, said you're so spiritual. You're the one that has seen all the great and mighty works. Couldest thou not has watched and prayed for one hour? <laughs> Sometimes I think about us, our stand that we take and all the things that we stand for and how we're kind of brazen to say, you know, we ain't going to deny him. We're not going to fail. Uh, but sometimes we fail so bad, I wonder if God don't look at us and said, Couldest thou? You. You're the one that made this great stand. You're the one that said this. And then, then I thought about uh, the expectation of this demand. He could, said, Couldest thou? Then he said, Couldest thou not watch? Uh, one point says, Couldest thou not watch and pray? Couldest thou? That was all Christ asked of him. He said, I, I'm going up here. Uh, to pray and, and it talks about in that verse of scripture he talks about the hour in verse 35 the hour might pass that don't mean he was up there at hour he's talking about that hour that he's facing of Calvary yeah, right. but uh, he had to be he must have been there brother Doug about an hour right. because he looks at Simon and him and said couldest thou not watch and pray an hour couldest thou couldest thou not watch and pray uh, he didn't ask him much. Uh, it was not much asked for. He could have asked. He could have asked for a lot of other things. I, I thought about. It. He could have asked. He could have asked them to share in his uh, humiliation and in uh, his his. Uh, 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 he could have had them go on up there with him when he was broken and his sweat was coming as drops of blood and the anguish of soul fell upon God. He could have, he left him back there and said, just watch and pray. And he went a little farther. He could have asked him to go just a little bit farther. He could have share, asked him to share in his agony of, of Calvary. Amen. He could have asked him, hey, go and share some of this agony of Calvary that I'm going to go through. Uh, he could ask them uh, uh, to share in the scourging and the sufferings and some of the things that go through here. Right. Peter said, I'll never deny you, okay, Peter, if you won't deny me, go with me. Let them slap you and let them uh, bite on you and let them crown you and, and do things. He could have asked them a lot of things, uh, but he just simply asked them to watch and pray. Yeah. Could he still not watch and pray? Uh, I, I'm going to Calvary. I'm fixing to suffer all this for you and couldest thou it's a simple question couldest thou not not watch and pray uh, he just simply asked him a, a simple question you know he asked us that same question in the book of Matthew the book of Matthew chapter 24 uh, uh, Jesus says it two or three times he says watch therefore for you know not what the hour of your Lord cometh watch therefore for you know neither the day nor the hour that the son of man cometh in Revelations he talks about the, the church in, the, in uh, the latter part of Revelations chapter number 3 he asks him again uh, uh, watch and strengthen and pray and strengthen the things that remain God sometimes don't ask a lot of us, but some here he just simply asks them, could you not watch and pray? Couldst thou not watch and pray? And then notice notice the third thing, the expression of this duration. Couldst thou not watch and pray one hour? He didn't say you had to pray all night. He didn't. You know, you know, uh, 
how quickly an hour can pass. If you don't believe it, tell it say you're going to take an hour nap. <laughs> it's over in a hurry. Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, and I'm an nap taker. I've always, I've always taken a nap. I've always done it. When I was preaching on the road, uh, in meetings years ago, all the time, I, every day about one o'clock, I take a nap, and uh, the spirit of nap hits me every day about one o'clock. Amen. <laughs> it just hits me, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll come home. Case said I can be doing anything, but I'll show up about fifteen to one <laughs> back at the house, and I lay down and take a minute nap, and you, you know you can do what you want to. I just, you know, sometimes the best, most spiritual thing you can do is take a nap. Right. Amen. And, uh, and I, I just like to take a nap. I'll take 30, 40. And I'll tell Kay. I'll tell Kay. I said, well, I'm going to take 45 minutes. A little less than an hour. Boy, that sure does pass in a hurry. And she'll say, 45 minutes is up. I said, give me 15 more. <laughs> <laughs> you ever know that? <laughs> I mean, that hour passes so quick. About the only time I know an hour don't pass is when these crazy doctors have you come at 9 and you don't get in there until 11. You know, you, them two hours is long, buddy. Amen. I don't know why doctors do that. This that don't jump on me. But they, you, maybe you can explain that to me. They'll have an appointment for me at nine o'clock and five other people at nine o'clock. One doctor can't see five people at one at nine o'clock. Amen. I'm, I know there's a reason for that. But uh, but he he asked her to pray. He said, uh, you know, just one hour, twenty four hours a day, and he just asked, could you not pray? <laughs> one hour, just one hour. And, 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 and every time he come back, they sleep again. Now, just personally, personally, now I'm just preaching this a little simple thought. But personally, if I'd been there, brother Doug, I would hope if Jesus Himself <laughs> got on me <laughs> and said, "Couldn't you pray one hour?" I probably wouldn't have went back to sleep. I'd done my best to stay up, slap myself, or whatever thing else, you know. I'd done whatever I could. I, I wouldn't. But they just fell right back to sleep. Right. Boy, that way you are sometimes. We get a good challenge and boy, we feel good. About it. Right. And the Lord rebukes us in the spirit, rebukes us in the word. And then we just turn around and go right back. Yeah, Amen. Him. Go right back to where it was. Right. And, and just asked a simple question. He didn't ask for a day. He didn't say, could you pray all night? Could you pray all day? Could you pray a week? Couldest thou? He said, not watch one hour. Just one hour. You know how, how glad that we'll give an hour to what we want to. Yeah. Sometimes we give an hour to, you know, when you're dating and everything, give an hour to talk to your girlfriend and boyfriend. <laughs> Amen? They'll give an hour to that. Yeah. I remember when, 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 when we was young, Miss Janet, you'll remember this. When we was young, had them party lines, you know. Y'all remember them party? Y'all, these young folks. Hey, some of these young folks, honest to God, they'd, they'd be in a mental ward if they had to have party lines. Hey, man. I mean, you, 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 you had three people in your neighborhood on your phone. And, uh, and you go there and you got a hog, you go there and pick it up, and Sister Wiggle Jaws, you know. And finally, you have to break in and say, Could you please let me use the phone? And they could talk an hour and say nothing. Amen. And uh, can you imagine? Can you imagine? I'm telling you, if God rebuked me, I would be, uh, I would kind of feel bad, Brother Doug, uh, and, and say, whoa, wait a minute. This is God himself. God has been good to me. God has blessed me. I, I told Kay, I told Kay the other day, through all this stuff, I told Kay, I said, you know, God has been good to us. I, we missed a meal. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. I said. I, I said we preached these little old churches. They don't give you nothing, but we preached it. It ain't about money, right. but they don't give you nothing. They give me fifty dollars one time. <laughs> I took a preacher out to eat for lunch. It's been all that. <laughs> I think he just gave it to me to buy his lunch. I don't know, but anyway. <laughs> but I told Cass, I said we ain't missed a lick. God's good to us. God's blessed us. All of our kids is well. Our grandkids is all well. God's blessed us and took care of us in the midst of all this stuff. Boy, ain't it good, boy, when you look back and see how God yeah. has took care of us. And he, Peter, I've took care of you. I've blessed you, Peter. I've blessed you. I've been taking care of you. I've fed you. I've helped, helped you. Could you not watch at least just one hour? Just one hour, Peter. You know, we'll give an hour to uh, uh, to to watch a program. <laughs> 
we'll even set our TV up and what do they, what do they call it? Tape it. DVR. Yeah, they'll tape it so we, we can watch it when we get out of work. And we're gonna give that hour to that program, and that's fine. We'll give that hour and make sure we give it. We give an hour to play, sports and watch. We give an hour to nap, we give an hour to eat, whatever. And we're so well equipped to give an hour for this and an hour for that. We don't have time for nothing, but we can give an hour to anything we want to. Yeah, think of that. Amen. But when it comes to God, he said, could thou not give us an hour? Just one hour to watch and pray. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I thought about this, all this virus and all this junk going on. We probably spend an hour a day talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, over the day, over the day. A fellow called me the other day, a preacher called me the other day, and he, and he got me kicked off and then uh, about an hour and 15 minutes later I'm still talking I let him have it I mean I, I quoted everything I could quote and I told and Kay told me she said I hope nobody else calls you and asks you about this virus I'm tired of hearing you preach to all these people I said they don't have to ask me my opinion <laughs> now quick we can talk an hour now quick that passes but yet he said couldest thou not I thought, I wonder if we'd give an hour a day since this thing started. If each one of us had given an hour a day praying about this. I wonder what a difference it made. Yeah. Amen. I wonder what a difference it made. He said, could, you know, but couldest thou not give an hour to prayer? And he adds this word in Matthew chapter 26. Let me read what he says here. In Matthew chapter 26 and verse number 41. Now what is this? Watch and pray that you enter not in temptation. Their spirit is, uh, uh, no, no, verse 40. He said, and when he cometh to the disciples, he findeth them asleep. He said to Peter, what? Could you not watch with me? Yeah. One hour. <laughs> Could you not meet with me at least one hour? I'm in here praying. I'm out here praying. Could you not at least with me pray an hour? Good. <laughs> Could we not just meet with the Lord an hour? Yeah. One hour. That's not much. You got 23 other hours to do what you want to. Yeah, think of that. God just asked for one, one hour. Amen. How disappointing Christ must have been. How disappointing Christ must be with us sometimes. Yeah, you're right. yes, sir. But I ask this question. I wonder what a difference would make in your life if you gave him one hour a day. Just one hour. It passed so quickly. Just one hour. Not only in you, but I wonder what a difference it would make if, if, you, if you and your family met together for one hour. One hour. Amen. What a difference it would make in our families, in our sake. What difference did it make in our church if we gave God just one hour? Amen. What? Couldest thou, couldest thou, not, couldest thou not watch and pray? And he said, the, the Spirit, the Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He said, the Spirit's weak. I know you wanted to. I know, I know when I said to you, watch and pray, that you really won't do that. Your Spirit was touched. But the flesh, one. And you went to sleep. <laughs> Amen. And you know, sometimes we're so willing to really want to see God move. And we're willing to see, and we want, spiritually, in our hearts, we want God to move. We want to see revival. We want to see something happen. But then the flesh, when we're in these altars, we're so sincere. <laughs> the time we get home, the flesh overrides and and other things become between us and the Lord. Yeah. I wonder if God don't look down from heaven and say, could you not give me, with me, one hour? You know, me and Kate's busy. I'm always doing something. I'm either helping my boys or grandkids or preaching or something. And me and Kate made up her mind that we was going to spend time together each day, each day. And so the evening sometimes, sometimes in the middle of the day, <laughs> we make us a, we're coffee drinkers, we'll make us a cup of coffee. And we'll go out, Brother Doug, to the lake, which is just five, six minutes we can be at the lake. And we'll pull out there on the edge of that lake and sit there in a spot, and we just sit there and talk, drink our coffee. Amen. And we'll just spend an hour Sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more. 
I was not when we went out there in two hours or something. We're still sitting there. And my boy looked at me and he said, Daddy, what do y'all do that for? He said, that's boring. <laughs> I said, you may think it's boring to go out there with your wife, <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> that's what I told him. <laughs> and you know what's so funny about this? I guess it's funny, but... but the time or two, Brother Doug, we'd be out there sitting, we'd be drinking our coffee and everything, and and and, and I'd be sitting there and I'd have my hand up on the console, and we'd be just sitting there talking, and directly I'd feel her hand joining mine. And we'd just sit there, hold hand, talk. Watch this a walk trail. We watch everybody walk, life at them. <laughs> we took cookies one time, cookies and coffee. People would come by and say, We got cookies, y'all like that one? <laughs> They're jogging for their health, but we just had a good time. I'm serious. <laughs> we have a good time. And one time, one time, I told Kay, I said, get your, get your, get your smartphone out. And I said, film me. <laughs> I got up there about 10 yards, Sister Nett, from the truck. And here I couldn't run down like I was running. And she was taping me like that. Like I was a jogging. I said, send that to the kids and the grandkids. <laughs> My oldest son, my oldest son sat back and said, Oh God, mommy looks like he's having a heart attack. <laughs> they didn't know I didn't run for ten yards. <laughs> we didn't have fun. That hour. We laugh. We have fun. We talk. We fellowship. Just that one hour. You'd be surprised what it's done. Just that one hour. That we take time to spend together. Can you imagine what what goodness would come out if you could just spend one hour? Just one hour a day. That's all he asked for. When I, I try to read every night before I go to bed. I try to read and and and, and everything. And uh, I lay in the bed and read. Kay stays up longer than I do. And I lay in the bed and read. And I close my Bible, sister, and that, and I roll over, and it's just like automatic. It's like, Lord, I love you. It's just like talking, just like he's sitting right there. You know where it come from? That little hour of time. He got closer and closer. It's just like, can you imagine what a change in making your life if you could just be willing to give him one hour? Good as thou not, watch and pray one hour. One hour. Change your life. Change your family. See, if you get changed and your family gets changed, his church going to get changed. <laughs> Because it's made up of you, it's made up of families, and this church gonna be changed. You know, purpose in your heart. I'll give God an hour. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over a hundred thousand views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.